All right, guys, so lately everyone has been obsessed with this, so we have to discuss it. And the topic of today is the... Fucking Arig. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Gladiator Status. And today I'm reviewing a record that's not the most common one. We're not gonna get any views on this, on this video for sure. Technifiber Rebound 298, a racket endorsed by Iga Sviatek. Check out the specs. Guys, Grisha is not expecting me to, you know, record him. That's why he's just, just standing. He always just stands like oh, this here. Oh, all right. oh, oh, you're oh, here. So oh, sorry, I was on my here's, phone. Here's yeah. the record for you. Yes. <laughs> so about the Technifiber, uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. Apparently, we have some weight added on it. Okay, but you know, it's it's fine because otherwise it would be too light for us. And apparently, it's not only endorsed by Iga Sviatic, but also by some by some Sofia that we have no idea about. Uh, and yeah, you know. Yeah, go Sofia. Go, so let's go Sofia. All right. Yeah. First of all, I want to congratulate Iga for the incredible performance at the Australian Open. You know, semi-finals in a Grand Slam is no joke. But yeah, now let's talk about the racket itself. I liked it. It is a rather light frame and in stock form it's absolutely not a weapon for me. However, I could totally see myself customizing this thing to about 330 grams on strong and ripping every single ball on the court. Losing a little bit on the maneuverability, but who cares about the maneuverability, right? So yeah, even with the current spec weighing at about 306 grams, I really enjoyed playing with the rebound. Though, I gotta say that Arik enjoyed it even more. I haven't seen him play so aggressively since... Like, never. But yeah, he'll tell you about this in his own voiceover. Backhands. That's what stood out the most to me. I mean, the direction that I was managing to give the ball was just ridiculous. My backhand isn't the worst out there, but some of the winners that I was hitting Arik with were surprising even for me. My tactic was very simple. A deep, oh, slow ball to Arik's forehand, and then an absolutely unbelievable short angle with my backhand that even Arik couldn't reach. Forehands, first of all, I gotta say sorry, because lately my forehand isn't my strongest point. Still though, with the rebound, I totally saw the potential for an incredible forehand. It spins the ball effortlessly and at the same time it is quite stable on impact for its weight. For its weight, okay? Comparing it to heavier rackets, no, it's less stable. And yeah, that was kind of the main problem for me with this one. Lack of confidence on the more offensive shots. It's just too light. Though, the platform for customizing is great in my opinion. In the end of the day, adding weight is easier than getting rid of it, right? So yeah, the stability issue can be easily fixed and in every other aspect, the racket is amazing. Seems like a candidate for a pretty high score in the end. Alright, let's approach the net where the racket once again performed very well. The lightweight helped with preparing the volley quickly but ruined the impact with the ball, but once again, everything else, really good. The returns felt very solid. I was managing to take risks with great success quite often and gained a huge confidence on the returns, with both forehands and backhands. Even the lack of weight wasn't that noticeable, which is kind of weird because the returns usually get damaged the most with lighter frames. Serves, also once again, great feel and great direction. There was no serve that stood out particularly, but that's not something bad. My first serves weren't achieving any great speeds, but the percentage was really high, and my kicks felt very secure too. So, you know, I can't really complain. I have a very specific person to recommend this racket to. Alright, yeah. If you play like Arik, or if you're Arik, check this one out. I do 100% recommend that you add weight to it, because the 295 grams that it comes with is a bit of a joke in my opinion. No, like if that's your weight, I totally understand it and keep it in stock. But if you're playing with a racket weighing over 305 grams, 
The rebound in stock form won't do, so, you know, add some weight to it. Okay, so, uh, I'm about to do a saber. Check it out. Alright guys, everybody here, including well us, are huge fans of uh, Iga Swiatek. Alright, uh, so well, actually she did very well in uh, in Australian Open. She did what round did she do? Semi-finals, man. Please, okay, nice. come on. I know everything, especially her name, Iga Swiatek. Alright, so so guys, if you like the content or Iga, subscribe. Yeah, like and follow, please, man. Oh. Follow us on Instagram, guys. We got a really cool Instagram page. Yeah. At least in our opinion. Ale. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Yo, Arik, nice, nice, nice tennis clothes. Nice, you know, nice. Here's the racket. It's just uh, playing against you. I never run, you know. I don't need to run. So ah. It's fine like this. All right. The la racket design isn't like spectacular, no? I mean, at least <laughs> it's not as beautiful as my handwriting, you know. <laughs> but I guess it's going to be good. You Looks, guess? I guess. I okay. guess. All right. That's always important. Let's see if that's the truth. 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 Let's go. Woo. Well, this was an unusual experience, but I'm happy that we're having this privilege of trying out some original rackets. Hopefully, this racket will show us that there are many hidden gems in the racket industry. And of course, let me congratulate Swatek. Because normally, the people that have rackets with their names on it are the most legendary uh, legends, like Roger or Rafa. But then there's Iga. She's only 20 and already has a racket with her name. That makes me feel very good about my achievements in life. Moving on, the most memorable thing from the playtest for me was the feel. Generally, in every shot, the impact was very pleasing. It felt like I had a vibration dampener in every string. And thanks to that, I had the sensation of holding a ball in my hand, allowing me to direct it to wherever I want it with a small wrist movement. For example, on the forehand, I could do with a bit more of power, but overall it gave me the confidence to go for every shot and not hesitate when risking with down the line shots and with approaches where I would hit the ball on the rise to give my opponent less time to react. The backhands were decent as well. Maybe, again, I was missing a bit the power that I get from my speed MP, but other than that, there's not much to complain about. And complaining is my profession, so that's a lot coming from me. Well, I have to say that from the different backhands, the slice wasn't the highlight of the day. I noticed that when I was hitting a bit out of the sweet spot, the racket wasn't giving me the opportunity to correct myself and try to give it a good direction. The perfect word to describe the surf is effortless. You know when you see a tasty chocolate tablet on the table and suddenly, without noticing, it's already in your stomach. That's the feeling I got when I was doing the first serves. Without noticing or stressing my arms, I was hitting some big serves in every direction. I have to say that my second serves were stable and I had good punch after the ball bounce. And this was thanks to that uh, big amount of contact that I had with the balls during the impact because that helps you to have more contact time to produce a nice kick serve spin. The volleys re reminded me about the good feel that I was talking about earlier. That day I tried to play both deep blocking volleys as well as short drop shot volleys. And in both cases I was able to finish the points confidently. Well, I guess that the added weight gives more stability to this frame, which helps you to be more consistent on the net. So. If you ever buy this model, I would very much recommend you to add some grams as well. Well, finally, the design. Well, it's fine. It's like some uh, modern arts, you know, sometimes where the artist doesn't do shit, apart from putting a bit of color on one corner and calls it a masterpiece. So what do I know? Maybe it's genius. 
Let's see the grades.